Today I'm going to be hanging out with my friend Alan Chung. He's a filmmaker and content creator and a good friend. We first met at a film production internship in 2014 at a company called ISA TV. So Alan and I, we go back 10 years, but my main hope today is to give Alan a chance to tell his story. Alan's definitely got a lot of experience when it comes to shooting and working on sets. I also forgot to introduce myself. If you're new here, my name is Alan. Alex O. Oh, I am a filmmaker and creator and I am documenting every day, at least trying to. My goal here is to create a community where we can encourage and inspire each other and also have a place for us to share about our lives. We're at an established restaurant called Peking Gourmet here in Garden Grove, California. They serve Korean Chinese food, one of my favorites. We're here to get some jajangmyeon and jjampong. Jjampong was one of my favorite things to eat growing up. Afterwards, we always got to end it on some boba. And that's what we do. We literally eat, get boba, and then have deep talks. His birthday is coming up. So drop in the comments down below. Happy birthday, Alan. <laughs> he actually watches a lot of my videos and he comments all the time. So he'll probably see uh, the messages if you guys leave anything down there. All right, let's get going. FX30. Hey guys, my name is Alan. I'm a cinematographer and DP, and I'm from Orange County, California. And today, we're here on Alex's show. <laughs> my show. When did you know, like, video production, like, when did it become more of, like, your career, like, or, like, what you wanted to pursue long-term? I took a class, and I found out, you know, there's people out there that get paid to just shoot videos. At the time, YouTube didn't really exist yet. All my peers were not doing film. I went into it and I was like, oh, I feel like I'm the only Asian in the, in the, in the class, you know? There wasn't really any Asians in the film industry that I, that I knew of personally. This was when I started watching Wong Fu stuff. You actually work with Wong Fu. It's kind of crazy now that I think about it because I got to see people that I idolized growing up and then being able to work alongside with them. When you're working alongside like friends that you know in the industry, it honestly doesn't feel like work anymore. It feels like you're just a bunch of friends coming together and trying to make something really cool to show the world. What does the technical role look like for this specific project? When you're the DP, you're kind of in the entire process of making decisions. You pretty much need to know the story in and out. Usually the director will have those camera angles figured out, but they'll confer to you about, you know, if there's a better looking shot. As a DP, that's when you start putting your input in and being like, hey, I think there's a better way to maximize this emotional shot by shooting it this way. The director and DP relationship is very strong. As a DP, you're also wrangling your entire camera department. So you kind of need to be able to give out instructions and being confident that your team members can do the job and not micromanaging. If I were to give advice to my younger self, I'd be like, work on more shoots, work on more sets, meet more people. That took a little bit of time for me to like kind of figure out. Sure, you love holding a camera, but the problem is you need to actually also go out and meet people. So you kind of have to be an extrovert. That's something that no one really tells you. Go out there, find projects, and then go with the flow with the people that you really, really like hanging out and working with. Ultimately, if you're really fun to work with, people will always call you back. What is like one of the hardest lessons you've learned like from like a failure? Probably when I was first DPing a really big thing for a friend and we involved a bunch of people, like 30 extras. At the time, I wasn't really good at delegating people and I was a little hesitant to do it and I was really afraid. When things needed to get done, I didn't know how to do ask, you know, tell the gaffer to do this, the grip department to do this. So in the end, they all just waited for me to say something, but because I was fairly inexperienced, I didn't really say anything and I just started moving lights by myself. Ultimately, I think I took a good look at myself from that shoot and I was like, man, if I really wanted to keep doing this DP thing, I need to be able to work on myself and be better at delegating people and knowing when to compromise shots when we're running out of time. Literally last night, mm -hmm. we were talking about how we grow in this industry. It takes, it takes some luck, you know, it takes good timing. 
I think a really good one was probably, actually probably how we met. At the time I was looking for an internship and I saw a posting from Wong Fu and then same, same boat as Alex, we both applied and then uh, we got put into ISA and that's where I met Alex. That was a pivotal milestone because pretty much I got introduced to the whole Asian filmmaking community, which I didn't even know existed. Everyone was so passionate to like make stuff that, you know, when Alex and I worked as interns at ISA, we got to work on some projects that I don't think if I were to try to do this myself, I would never have gotten the opportunities to do stuff. Some of the stuff that Alex and I worked on was like music videos, web series, all through just that one internship. Actually, I'm gonna share a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is unplanned. I didn't plan to take the no, mic from Alan. That timing was crazy. I was a second year bio student at UC Irvine. I was in like my organic chemistry class and I was like, do I really wanna be here right now doing this or would I rather be out there like making videos. That was literally two weeks before like Wang Fu posted on Facebook like, we're looking for interns. If I had not come to that realization two weeks prior to seeing the application, I don't think I would have even applied for that internship. I think people say it's, it's a lot of timing, it's a lot of luck. I think it's also like where you are physically but also like mentally and emotionally. And I just happened to be at a place where I knew that if an opportunity or like if there was a door that I could open, I would take it. The concept of timing really is um, everything. You can be the best at what you do, but if you're not there at the right time, it doesn't mean anything. If you guys are interested in like whatever I, I'm doing, um, I do have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Alan Y. Chung. I also have an IG, they're all the same, so you can't really miss anything. So I think that's a good place to wrap it for today. As always, um, your comments and your um, thoughts are always appreciated, so feel free to let me know what you thought of today's episode, and stay tuned for the next one. I'll see you guys. Peace out.